Welcome to another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe. This week, Miss Erica is dressed like a skeleton because we are exploring the book of Romans. Romans is basically like what is the most important or the bare bones of following Jesus look like? This week, be sure to read Romans 8 together as a family. You can find fun, creative ways to explore Romans 8 together as a family in your parent email. So be sure to check that out, mom and dad. All right, let's get started. Romans is such a cool book. Remember, Paul is writing to these little house churches that were meeting all over Rome. My ribs fell off. Paul is writing to these little house churches that were meeting all over Rome. But remember, he's never met these people before. In most of Paul's letters, Paul is writing to groups of people that he knows, to churches that he's planted and people that he knows really well and that he's friends with. And so in those letters, he's talking about problems or stories that he knows, people that he knows about. And he's talking about the specific church culture that's in that place that he understands and that he's experienced. But in Romans, he's writing to a church that he's never been to before. And so Paul is focusing on what are the most important things about following Jesus? What should you look like and act like when you have made Jesus your king? So when we read Romans, we can learn a lot about what are the most important or bare bones pieces of following Jesus, because we can see what does Paul focus on here in Romans and what does he not focus on? And that teaches us a lot about following Jesus. If we're looking at our big Bible timeline, we can see that Paul sent the book of Romans with Phoebe way before he ever went to Rome. We can also see that Rome was the capital of the whole Roman Empire. The Roman Empire controlled a lot of the countries around the Mediterranean Sea, and Rome was the capital of that entire empire. In Romans 8, Paul is explaining what our new life in Jesus should look like. I got my BFF, Pastor Jonathan, to read to us from Romans 8. If you guys want to be in a future costume video, please send me an email. I would love your help. Even if you've done it before, you can totally do it again. So let me know. All right, take it away, Pastor Jonathan. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set a mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Thanks. Here Paul is comparing two types of people. The first group of people are people that are controlled by their natural sinful desires. A lot of times in Romans, Paul calls this their flesh. Basically, Paul is saying that these people, they think about sin, they're controlled by sin, they are enemies and hostile to God. And because of that, they cannot please God. The second group of people that Paul talks about are people that are walking with the Spirit. They think about the same things that the Holy Spirit is thinking about. They care about the same things that the Holy Spirit cares about. And this is how they please God. They partner with the Holy Spirit and they obey Him when the Holy Spirit tells them to do something. 
Paul wants these people in the house churches in Rome to remember that they should be in the second group of people, people that are walking with the Holy Spirit. Remember when these people made Jesus their king, God sent them his Holy Spirit. And Paul wants them to remember they actually have the same Holy Spirit as the disciples got at Pentecost in Acts 2. And so now these people should be walking with the Holy Spirit. They should be partnering and obeying the Holy Spirit every time the Holy Spirit asks them to do something. That's what it looks like for somebody to be walking with the Holy Spirit, Paul says. But what about you and me? We don't live in ancient Rome, but we do have the same Holy Spirit that the people in the Bible did. Remember, when you make Jesus your king, he doesn't give you a junior Holy Spirit or like a baby Duplo version. God gives you the same Holy Spirit that he gave the disciples in Acts 2, that he gives Pastor Steve and your mom and dad. You have the same Holy Spirit living inside of you when you make Jesus your king. And so it's important for us to remember what does it look like to be walking with the Holy Spirit, to be a boy or girl that is walking with the Holy Spirit every day. Well, I think these same words that Paul wrote them are true for us. When we are walking with the Holy Spirit, it should look like us partnering with Him, not fighting or being hostile to the Holy Spirit, but working with Him. And it should also look like us obeying the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, you obey Him right away. This week, I just want to have your family say a simple prayer together. I want you to pray this prayer. Holy Spirit, help me partner and obey you when... And then you have to fill in the rest. So think about somewhere or some time where you think you need to partner or obey the Holy Spirit better. Maybe if you're a mom and dad, you need to partner and obey the Holy Spirit better at work. Maybe if you're six, you need to partner and obey the Holy Spirit better in kindergarten. I don't know what it is, but you guys talk about it as a family and then take turns everybody praying that prayer. And do, do these motions while you're praying because it helps your whole body get involved in praying. Actually in the Bible, a lot of times when people are praying, even when David is writing down all those prayers we have in Psalms, he's talking about praying with your whole body, your arms and your hands and your feet and your mouth. And so it's kind of a fun way for us to join the people in the Bible in praying like this too. So I want you to pray that way. Say, Holy Spirit, help me partner and obey you in and then fill in the blank with your own specific place or time that you want to be obeying and partnering with the Holy Spirit better. All right, guys, it's been so much fun hanging out with you. Thanks for watching another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe. All right, guys, remember this Sunday at 1030 a.m., we'll be back at Lake Akatink. We're gonna be at the large shelter by the water again. And I have loved worshiping, reading God's word and praying together with all of you. It's been so fun to be the church together in person. So I would love to see you guys there Sunday, Lake Akating, 1030 a.m. at the large shelter. If you have questions about how are we gathering safely, we have all that information online or you can email me. All right, guys, I'll see you there. Bye.